So if you're an athlete trying to learn about endurance, you will come across a great multitude of definitions, including aerobic conditioning, cardio, anaerobic conditioning, anaerobic endurance, strength endurance, buffer capacity, muscular endurance, the, the list goes on. And I am here to tell you that instead of diving too deep into those synonyms and definitions, trying to categorize them, you should learn only one thing, what everything else leans towards, and that is the energy systems. If you understand this one concept, what the energy systems are, I can guarantee you that almost 90% of your questions regarding time formats or rest periods and all of that will be answered. If you understand this concept, you will no longer wonder whether a boxer should do steady state cardio or intervals. You will no longer question yourself whether if you as a marathon runner should run 20 second intervals or 60 minutes steady states, like it will be very clarified if you understand this one concept. So I have made a lot of videos on this subject from before, but I should give you a little recap in this video as well. Your body, it has two categories of energy systems. The aerobic system, which is one, and the anaerobic systems, which are divided into two further subcategories. The anaerobic systems, we have anaerobic glycolytic system and the ATP PCR system. And the aerobic system, it just stands there alone. Let's begin with the aerobic system. This system is only active, or it's active at all times actually, but it is predominant during low effort to moderate effort activity. This is because it's dependent on oxygen. When I'm sitting here speaking with you right now, it's low effort. I don't have to call upon the stronger, more powerful energy systems. Your body is economical. It only puts forth as much effort as it has to. When I'm taking a walk, I'm using the aerobic system. When I'm doing a light to moderate jogging thing, like it is dependent on the aerobic system. If I up the notch, if I start to sprint, if I start to increase the effort of the activity, your body will say, okay, I don't have time to provide you with oxygen. This is getting too hard for me. I have to call upon the stronger energy systems, the backups, which is the anaerobic systems. It will begin with the glycolytic system then. Now your body cannot rely on oxygen. It has to use anaerobic sources once again. It will start to burn glucose to provide you with energy and you will have a rest product known as lactate. And this lactate also releases hydrogen ions into your blood making the environment acidic. This is why you get that slow and awkward feeling once you up the notch a lot in your workout. For example, if you're a boxer or a wrestler, you get into a tough scrambling situation and you both go all out into, into a sequence of maneuvers, offensive and defensive maneuvers, you get this like burnout, so to speak. This is the lactate accumulating. And this applies to all other sports as well, a 400 meter sprint, an 800 meter sprint. So in essence, when, you, when you're doing like your training for your sport, you have to analyze the intensity and the effort that is used in the sport. If you're a boxer, a wrestler, you know that, that the effort of exchanges will be very high during the endurance. Does that mean that low and steady state cardio will be applicable to wrestling? Probably not. Because low and steady state cardio, it is under low and steady state conditions. You have to analyze the demands of your sport. If the demands of your sport require very high efforts of activity in short time periods, well, then your conditioning sessions have to be similar to that or even remotely similar to that. You cannot dive away too deeply from this. And we have the strongest energy system in your body also, the ATP PCR system. This lasts for activities up to 10 seconds and it can produce like the highest amount of energy in the strongest manner possible. So when you're doing a 100 meter sprint, you're doing a max set of repetitions in the deadlift, the bench press, the back squat, any activity that has maximum effort or needs maximum effort will use this system. So in essence, aerobic system, like the title of this video, muscular endurance, when people use this term, they are referring to the anaerobic endurance, the anaerobic system, you know. The effort of the activity is so high that oxygen cannot be used. And to train this system, you have to design your time intervals in short periods of time with maximal effort. Think in terms of effort. For example, if I were to do a 60 minute run and I were to say, okay, I'm gonna go maximal effort from start to finish. 
you would only be strong in the, probably the first two minutes and then your anaerobic system is depleted. This is because to train the anaerobic system you have to divide it into rounds so that you get rest periods and your glucose levels they recover again so that you can go all out again and all of the lactate they go out of your system. This is why you divide it into intervals, periods. And this is more similar to sports that require like sports that are of volatile nature like wrestling, boxing, combat sports, 400 meter sprints, like bam, high effort activities. So you need to design your conditioning systems in this way also. Once again, if you compete in a high effort volatile sport, if you only do like low moderate effort that they do in marathon or long distance cycling, you're not going to be able to you're not going to be prepared for those intensities that you will experience in your high effort sport. So it's all about like the intensity and the volume when you design your strength or endurance training plan. And how you understand this is by studying the energy systems once again. I have made videos on this in this past, but once you understand this, you will know how to design those. And this is the energetic adaptation exclusively. Like, we have two forms of adaptations. The energetic adaptation, which we talked about now, and the movement-specific adaptation. For example, let's say you're a boxer or a wrestler once again. Then you need to be endurant in your whole body, your legs and your upper body. So if you only train through running to develop endurance, running is mostly based on the core and the lower body. Upper body also to a certain extent, but mostly the core and the lower body. As a boxer, you're using your upper body a lot as well, your hip rotation. So your endurance sessions, they need to emphasize this aspect also. Like, it's not only about the energy system that is used, it's also about the movement specificity. So make those two in line, in harmony, and you will train in a manner that is beneficial for your sport. So those two are very important. Movement specificity and energy system specificity. If you want to study this concept, watch my other videos, especially the one about the energy systems, learn about this concept, and I can guarantee you that 90% of your questions will be answered regarding endurance. How long the time format should be, how long the rest period should be, whether steady state or interval is more appropriate for a combat athlete, whether a marathon runner should do this or that. All of those questions will be answered by the energy systems. Thanks for watching.